Hey guys, welcome back to my podcast. I have Jay Lafar on today. Um, I went to his uh, comedy show, I think it's been like two years when we saw uh, Lisa Landry. And we oh, did- Lisa, I love Lisa. Yeah. And so I just wanted to bring you on because I wanted to, for one, catch up because it's been too long. And then just also just talk to you a little bit about like your background, how you're dealing with COVID now, and honestly, whatever you want to talk about. So sure. I know you, you were telling me about the Zoom show, the uh, awesome <laughs> Zoom yeah. show you did. Oh uh, yeah, I did a Zoom show. It was and it was terrible. It was I've done I've done uh, several online shows since this whole malarkey, this whole these shenanigans started and, and uh, so I did a I did a Zoom one and it was just terrible. And 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 it was funny because the people I did it with were like, This was a great show and I was like, It wasn't. It was it was not a good time for the audience or us and why are we pretending? But we're just, you know, if if we're that hard up to have the validation of other people, then maybe, then maybe you know we're we're really sadder than I thought, and 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 the same with the I did a I, I actually got banned from a, a virtual reality shows on a platform, so that why was, that was a because I okay here's the thing I I am not a politically correct in in any way whatsoever type of thing and that that's problematic for some people and i may have used gratuitous use of homosexual slurs in, in the form of fag but what when i say fag i don't mean it like like you know bad i mean like two guys fucking you know not like not like not like in a bad way but like in a junior highway like when you yeah. talk about you're a fag because like i got a nephew who's a fag because he has a pink shirt and i call him a little fag Sure. And I'm like, you, you fag, you got a picture, right? Because he needs to know that he's nothing. And, <laughs> and But what happens is, um, so then they told me, okay, well, you can't do that again. They had me come back on and do another show after telling me not to use that, that particular word. And uh, also that I couldn't do any, I, they gave me a, a, a litany of things I couldn't talk about or, or say. And so I use that basically as a set list so that I could, I just hit on all those topics so that then uh, by the end, by then they, about halfway through my set, which I was killing by the way, uh, unlike all the other clowns that were on there. And uh, because basically when you do VR shows, no one really cares you know they just it's just a bunch i don't even know the people that watch vr shows what they what they would be there they have to be the the worst of the homeschooled sad people who just sit there and they don't leave their houses or apartments and and so i end up um vr comedy show that you're talking about it was yeah a virtual reality you wear a, a a face mask headset and then you're in a room and you're 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 uh you're, what's that? And you're an avatar. Yeah. Okay. And so, like the audience are all avatars too. And by the way, they, they yeah, and they heckle you. The avatars heckle you, and they start shit with you. And that was the other thing. Before the show, uh, then uh, they they're like, well, well, hey, why don't you just interact with the other people before the show? I was like, I, I, that's not really what I want to. I don't do that with real comedy shows. I don't really, you know, like. I'll talk to people after a show and I'll, I'll chit chat and stuff, but like before the show, you know, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to show my hand. And, yeah. and so then they're, they were rude. The people in the, the cause here's the thing online has created a system where people don't get punched in the face for being rude. And they need that. Like, you know, people who talk shit online would never talk that way to me in real life because I would beat the unholy fuck out of them. And, it's been and, and yeah, so what I do is I end up uh, these guys, and so and I was I was already enraged by 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 the time I was going on the virtual stage, and so I just <laughs> and I saw a couple of the people from their avatar, and I gave them shit, and they started talking stuff. And here's the thing: like hecklers are supposed to get kicked out of the shows. And the, but they didn't kick him out, and that that just that goaded me on more. So, anyways, I probably went a little over the top, but I ended up. Um, they were the the bulk of the people were laughing because you could hear them laughing, and they also do like avatar 
finger snaps or whatever gay shit was. I don't know. It was terrible. It was just it was absolutely the worst. But Weird. but I love I love my friend Al who who got me on there and uh, I didn't want to I didn't want to mess up because he enjoys doing that stuff and I do, I don't and I found that but I only needed two experiences with it to know that I didn't want to ever do it again. Not only that, so. so the experience is one thing, but then also like the fine line of telling jokes and what you can and can't say. In which case, oh they, yeah, we, yeah, they were like, you can't. Yeah, like, like, there's that's a big problem right now, anyways, because it's such a, a cancel culture, such a such you know they no one wants you to actually. Here's the thing: people want you to to tell them exactly what they believe. And if you don't, then they find that offensive and then they don't want to hear you and they want to silence you. So if you don't agree with someone, and, and by the way, if you really believe in freedom of speech, then you have to be open to every form of conversation, even if it annoys you, even if it's, even if it's something that like challenges you on your, on, on your very basic level. And a lot of people have grown up with you know, being indoctrinated into this idea that feelings are more important than actual facts and reality. And I don't believe any of that shit. I think that you have to actually, you actually have to challenge yourself. You have to, like, I change every, every couple of years, the things I believe in, like, you know, like my core values have stayed the same probably most of my life, but also the way I look at things, my perspective changes all the time. And a lot of people don't because they don't want to look like they're a bad person or a mean person, but then you're a fucking douchebag. You need to, you need to actually, you need to risk not being liked in order to really, you know, figure out who you are and what you believe in. And, and it's harder, I think for, for people who are in their, you know, early twenties these days, because, you know, the way that online culture is, people will go after you so viciously and so awfully, but, but like when you're a little older, it's good because you just don't give a shit. And I don't care what people say or like, I have people who, who will message me and like threaten me. And I'm like, Ooh, really? You can do that from your mom's basement. What are you going to do? Ooh, you know, this is, I'm not, I'm not ever scared, you know, but, it's uh but that's why i think now comedy is going to die after the covid thing so stand up comedy if it if it returns to real stages it's only going to be large acts it's not going to you're not going to have the int- like the best stand up comedy is intimate it's it's in a crowd of 40 people in a shitty basement or in some terrible place where people are drinking keg beer and you're, you know, you're trying out new ideas and some of them work and some of them suck. And, you know, you're, you're pushing the boundaries and, but people aren't going to do that anymore because everyone's so afraid to offend anyone or to, or to go against the, the, the cultural norms that are being pushed that it's just, I don't know. I, I think comedy, it, it's, it's become sad these days when people like Dave Chappelle, you know, are trying, when the, the you know the people are trying to cancel him and dave chappelle who i love i I think most most comedians would put chappelle in their top 10 list of stand-up comics um but you know and i don't even agree with a lot of the shit like he'll say like philosophically but but like on a, a comedic level he is brilliant and and he he's one of the few people and i think it also he has he has the integrity that comes with wealth because he has so much money. He doesn't care. He's like, well, you can't really do anything to me because I'm filthy rich. So like, even if, even if all this ends and I never get another penny, I'm still worth, you know, 30 million or $40 million and I will live a good life either way. So he has that. And most stand up comics don't most stand up comics uh, end up having a retirement plan, which involves, you know, doing real estate or, you know, drinking a bottle of whiskey and putting a plastic bag over their head in a Motel 6. So it's never really that good an ending. Well, and he stand-up. also doesn't have to report to anybody like Kevin Hart kind of does with businesses like Chappelle kind of has his own like, I'm going to go do this because I want to. I'm going to go say this because I want to, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah Kevin, Kevin Hart. Great example. Kevin Hart probably, uh, I think, I don't know if he did, but the year he was supposed to host the Oscars, he may have been the highest earning comedian uh, 
you know, outside is, I think Seinfeld still like obliterates everyone just because of the residuals he gets from Seinfeld yeah. and, and all of his other crap. But like when Seinfeld does shows too, and he tours still, so he makes a, a crap ton of money. But like Kevin Hart was doing, you know, stadiums. When you do stadiums, you're probably making two hundred and seventy-five thousand a night, and you know that's if you're doing three of them a week. You know that's 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 some serious money. Yeah. You know, I had, I had, I, I've had, I've had some good weeks doing comedy, but they were never two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar weeks. Let me tell you that they were, you know. It's like three thousand, four thousand dollars. That was a good week of comedy, you yeah. know. And but for a, a lot of comics, you know, especially working comics, which are a lot of, like a lot of them are struggling so much right now, and they're, you know, and I and I and that's why I also don't judge anyone if you make if you're doing VR shows, if you're if you're selling if you're selling uh, you know herbal remedies or doing whatever. I have no shame. Uh, about how to put food on your you know your family's table or paying your mortgage or rent do whatever you do. i work in amazon right now and while i'm trying to you know wait ride this thing out and i'm lucky that i got it you know i am i i i honestly i hate it every moment of the job because it's yeah, it's back-breaking labor but it's but you know it's what you do as an adult because that's what adults do is you try to do that and you know i i would never do a gofundme or any of that bullshit to you know right. to uh feed myself but uh but also i i wouldn't i don't think i would shame anyone who did because you know everyone has a different view and you, you know you get pushed into a corner and you don't know what the hell you're gonna do and it's scary it's scary for everyone right now and this you know it was supposed to only last a month i know like this whole thing and then and then it just keeps going and then you keep hearing people talk about uh uh you know when's it going to end it's not this cuz the government once it once it can show a bit of uh control over you it's not never going to not have that control anymore That's if they can force you to wear masks if they can force you to do whatever and and i'm not a uh, i'm not a covid denier i know it's a terrible disease and all that shit but yeah. the other side to it, there comes a certain point when you're like, well, maybe, maybe this is Mother Earth's way of weeding out, you know, the dead weight and, you know, kind of getting. I mean, the harsh it's, truth it's is we are overpopulated, right? I mean. Exactly. And, yeah. and we've talked about that as a society since the 60s, how we needed to lower the population and maybe, you know, letting this disease run its course because we keep, we keep doing things which which ultimately stop the uh, cessation of, of the growth of mankind. And we need, I don't know if, if that's a good thing always, because we have to get to a point where we're like, Oh, okay. No, maybe, maybe we're supposed to cull the herd a little bit and get rid of the old and the sick, which by the way, if we got, if, if we let COVID run its course and it killed all the old people that it's supposed to and all the people pre-existing conditions, then everyone could probably have free health care. So, I mean, are we looking at the big picture? I don't know, but yeah. it's, it's, but it's also one of those things when you talk about it, it sounds terrible, but, yeah. but is it, is it, I mean, is it, or is it something that we need to acknowledge and say that sometimes mother earth knows how to fix it herself and that if we're fucking with that, then maybe we're the problem and it's not the disease. So. And we haven't even gone through the flu pandemic, which I was understanding that's supposed to happen too. Oh yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's going to happen. Oh yeah. And uh, have you had the flu ever? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it sucks. It sucks. I, uh, we had it, it. It went through our house. Uh, was it a year ago or two years, Meg? Two years. Two years. And like, I'm a Lafar, So usually I'm sick for like a day and a half and then I'm back at the work. Oh, because I'm a real lucky. man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I refuse to allow myself to be uh, put down, but, uh, but also, you know, it's like the flu sucks. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where you get it. And then usually, and a lot of people, you get a very mild, mild case of it. And some people, you know, they feel terrible for a day or two and then, you know, they're back in their, their lives. But uh for me though, like, and so this is why I'm I'm a chicken shit 
you know, hypocritical asshole is because like I, I was supposed to go to New York, uh, whew, uh, June, then July, then this month and now September, uh, you know, cause I go up there and I do shows at the Saratoga comedy works. And also there's a theater that I do in Hudson falls, New York. And so like, uh, I usually try to piggyback them so that I can, you know, I can have a nice chunk of change. And, uh, but I also don't want to risk going up there and then getting my mom sick. Yeah. And, and so it's like, there's a part of me, it's like, I'm not a, a denier of this at all, but I also think that it's been blown out of proportion way much, but I also know that it affects elderly people and people with pre existing conditions at a level, which is, is, is not something I would want to risk. So, you know, I, uh, I'm, uh, I think, I think I'm probably, you know, I, I'm, I'm supposed to go up in September, but I'm probably going to knock it back another month again and go up in October. And it's at this point, it's not even about doing shows up there. It's just about having, uh, I go up there for like a, a mental health rejuvenation, you know, cause it's, it's good to see your friends and your family and, and to just be able to, you know, have the, those moments where, you, you know, you can uh, have a cigar and a, a pint of beer and, and just sit and talk shit. And, Is that where you're from? And it's just, yeah, from upstate New York. Oh, okay. I'm a hillbilly from the Adirondack Mountains, the foothills there. Fort Edward, New York. Uh, uh, George Washington slept in our town. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we have the old Fort Museum. They they still have the bed that he laid on. It was it looked like a shitty bed too, but it's uh, but you know George Washington, and uh, up where I'm from, it's kind of like in Texas where it's the Alamo yeah. and all that. Up where I'm from, it's all Revolutionary War stuff. We had the Battle of Saratoga, the turning point of the American Revolution, right near where I'm from, and we have uh, uh, Lake George, which was uh, if you ever saw the movie Last of the Mohicans. I think once I don't remember it. Okay, uh, it's worth a revisit. It's it's a good. Film. I read the books when I was a kid because I was a big James Fenimore Cooper fan, and I loved I love I loved history. I've always loved history, and uh, but so but up where I'm from, they had the uh, like the they had in the Fort Edward was uh, a fort which had been around for the French Canadian War. It had been around. It had been around for like a hundred years or 60 years, I think, before the American Revolution. And it was just always defeated and overrun and everyone was always slaughtered there. It was just a brutal bloodbath. Yeah. And we had the Mohawk Indians there. My dad was Mohawk Indian and uh, my mother's British, which was which was odd because uh, oddly enough, they both uh, kind of joined together during the uh, French and Indian War and uh the Mohawks hated the Hurons and the Algonquins and all the Indians that joined the French. And so it's just, but it's all history up there. And we have yeah. a place called Bloody Pond where there was a battle where they battled and the water turned red with blood because the Indians and the French and the British. Yeah, it was like, it was, it was a different time when, you know, they, they, they didn't really, they gave like, uh, like, uh, in Texas, there's Loud Woman Crossing or something. I think there's a, I, I can't remember the name of it. There's like yell, ho, Woman Hollering at Man or something. What's it called? Woman Hollering, woman hollering Creek. Is, is it a creek? I think it's a creek. It's a creek, right? Which it, creek is a thing in Texas, which isn't really a creek because there's no water in them half yeah. the time. So right. it's just a dry bed where, you know, there are rocks rocks and, and bird poop are so I gotta uh, say that your spouse yeah, from, is like awesome because she knows everything she knows the answer to everything whereas if I ask B my wife I'll be like what is it she'll be like what what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> she's on top of it right yeah right? yeah well she she's good she she's good she's solid she's a solid broad solid broad <laughs> that's uh, good <laughs> cool uh, yeah, I, uh, but now what this next thing is going to be for comedy and for me, like I've been working a little bit with uh, Steve Trevino, who's, you know, uh, 
great act and uh he's he's fun too because he uh kind of says you know hey just do the act you want to do i don't care work on the act that you really want to work on which is nice so there's no pressure on me so i can talk about whatever i want and um and and it's nice having you know another guy because like i headline most of the rooms that i've worked over the last you know eight years but uh it's uh, taking a secondary role and having someone who can give me feedback and help me to try to move to the next level, which, you know, which is what I've been trying to do. Yeah. Is it's just, it's nice. And, 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 it, and I have no ego when it comes to anything. I've always just wanted to put the best show on that I can for the audience. And, but it's also about finding your audience. And that's where I'm in the process of doing right now is finding a hardcore audience that likes me enough to, you know, at a hundred seat venue to spend, you know, 50 bucks a ticket. So, yeah. and sell that out so I can make $5,000 in a night and then, you know, make, make the money that I should be making instead of, you know, the chump chain. Cause comedy clubs don't pay shit for shit. Really? Um, they haven't raised, they haven't raised the money for standups unless you're a marquee name. Like if you're a marquee name with a good management, you can make some pretty solid coin. But if you're not, if you're just a solid road comic, you, you know, they're, you, you're going to top out at about 2,500 for a week. So do you plan and, to keep your style? Because I know it seems like it's like it's getting harder and harder to find platforms that will let you talk about whatever you want. So do you plan to keep it? It is. I, well, yeah. Oh, I'll keep my style. I'll, I'll, I'll still. I'll always be me. Yeah. I'm. Our, I'm. I'm writing out my. I, out of the last four months, I've been banned for three of them on Facebook. So I. <laughs> I'm trying to, I just, I get in trouble because I, but I also realize though, you know, uh, I, I'm just, I, I'm just not going to, I'm just going to stick to my, you know, uh, and this is the thing. So what I do is I've deleted a lot of the comedians on Facebook because they're, they're the more judgmental people too. Cause you know, I meet a ton of comics and yeah. a lot of them are very judgy. But uh, I'm just going to stick to why? Well, because they they're virtue signalers. They want to sound like they're they're being nice people when they're really not. Like no, you know, if you if you nobody you know if you change nice. your well, no, but you, you know how? To, okay, so a, a good example. Um, June is uh, a month for gay people, correct? Uh, it's a month. I don't know, yeah. but it's like, it's usually what they do is like businesses, businesses for June will celebrate the gays and they'll have yeah. rainbow stickers and flags and all their shit. But then after June, you don't see that. Why? Because it's just, it's a ploy. They just want to, they want to build goodwill. Same with Black Lives Matter. You know, all these businesses right now, if Amazon and all these other companies, they're all, you know, putting, you know, Black Lives Matter, and they give out bracelets and do all this stuff. But the reality is, it's because they don't want their factories burned down. They don't want their warehouses burned down. And it, it's a good business model. I, I don't. I'm not going to argue against that. You sure. know, because of that happened out in California. They burned down one of their warehouses. They probably lost, you know, uh, 150 to 200 thousand dollars worth of merchandise in a single evening. You know, or more. I don't. I don't know. But, I feel like they're uh, encouraging those bad apples to keep doing shit, though. And that's what's, that's oh, what's hurting oh, us. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. They are. And, and it does encourage because ideally what you should do is when people start behaving in a terrible way, like, you know, when the people up in uh, uh, Portland or, or Seattle, wherever it was where they had the, the uh, a autonomous zone where they were doing their own bullshit for like, you know, a week and a half or two weeks. And then finally the cops like, yeah, we're, we're not going to tolerate it anymore. You know, what you do is you, you just say, no, we're not going to allow this. And what's going to happen is we're going to go in here and we are going to beat everyone down that is resisting. And if you try to shoot at us, we're going to shoot at you and they just stop it. And I get protesting. Nonviolent protest is a great way to go. But if you're going to be, if you're going to destroy people's businesses and livelihoods and hold people 
you know, hostage in their own community, then you step over the, the boundaries of what is considered to be uh, acceptable behavior in a protest, I think. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I think, you know, I think there are shitty cops out there, but I also, I support the cops like 99%. And that 1% though of cops that murder people, hang them, hang them in a tree outside the police station if they actually murder someone. But also, you know, do that with all criminals, just hang them. And if we do that, then, then we stop having criminals. You know, if you, get, if you hang all of them, it sounds terrible, but that's how you do it. Because terrible people aren't like normal people. What they do, they do terrible things because they know they can get away with it, and because there's no repercussions. Well, you I don't know. I think have... I think you have good cops that turn can turn into bad cops, and it's like you know oh. you you'll never be able to filter out the shitty people. Like sometimes it just happens, and that's when you have to obviously look into it more. But will I go out and say all cops are bad? No. You can't. Oh, no, yeah, you couldn't. Yeah. And, and I agree with your statement, though. I think good cops can turn shitty. And I think that if you're a good cop and you're, if you are a good cop, and I'll put that in quotes, if you're a good cop and then you are witnessing other police officers doing things which would be considered the actions of amoral or immoral police officers, and yeah. you say nothing or do nothing, then you're, you're, tacitly giving them consent to behave in a terrible fashion and because of that they end up you know you're a bad cop then because you should have acknowledged that you know um there are movies you know it's just lacking yeah and, and, everywhere like uh, did you ever see serpico it's an old 70s movie it had uh El Pacino is like one of his early films, mm -hmm. but he was like an undercover cop and he wouldn't go on. He wouldn't take bribes. He wouldn't, you know, and they, all the other cops hated him. And then he ends up getting shot, but then he ends up being a hero because, you know, the people are like, yeah, cause I think ultimately Americans like a good guy. And I think they, after nine 11, I remember how people were about police officers and firemen too. They always like firemen. Although even in Seattle and, and in Portland, they're throwing rocks at firemen and shit. So, I mean, it's just the world's upside down. Um, well, police officers after 9-11, everyone was like, and they're all your heroes, you know, and, and I agree a lot of more, but there's, I, I know shitty cops. I was almost a cop up in New York. I had taken the New York City test in the Schenectady County and the Albany County and the Washington County. And I had gotten hired by Washington County for the Sheriff's Department. And then they, I was about ready to start and go into their academy. And then they had a moratorium on new hires. And they're like, well, we're going to start up next year. And I ended up going to grad school and, you know, going a different path. But uh, is that before comedy? Like, who knows? Oh, that was way before comedy. That was well. I started doing comedy in um, when I was in. I went. I went to an open mic in New York City when I was like twenty-two. And you just I did it. Bomb. Oh, but you yeah, just felt like just bombed. doing it, or yeah. And then I ne I didn't go on stage again for six years. So it was, it was such a oh, right. Yeah. Oh, it was awful. I was. I was so bummed. I was like, oh, but uh, is it because you didn't plan, yeah, or then, you just were nervous, or? Uh, I think a little bit of both. Uh, you know, definitely, I went up because I thought <laughs> my friends were like, "You're funny," and I was like, "Yeah, I am." And then I went up, and I wasn't. <laughs> I, just, I was because one of the things about stand-up comedy, which is very true, is like, uh, good. I mean, it's. I think a lot of people and I, I'm one of them I believe that I, it's, I can be funny in the moment when I'm on stage I can create a lot of funny stuff but the best stand-up comedy that you see is stuff that has been worked out you know 20 40 50 times in a in a club or in a theater where you've you know you've you've worked out all the kinks you know you know where the pauses are you know where the looks are where you're going to uh do a uh you know where there's a tag that you didn't think of before, which is why, you know, it's important to always record all your stand-up sets. So that way, you know, you can look back and go, Oh, okay. That's how that worked that night. Oh, shit. That's why. And that's why it didn't work tonight. 
you know, like good stand-up comedy is, and I've told people this for years, contrived spontaneity is just stuff that you've done a thousand times, but you're making it look like it's the first time you've ever done it. And, yeah. but then there are also yeah. genuine in the moment moments, which in most good comics and even some bad ones uh, will have those where you're like, Oh wow, that was really good. And I can't believe, Oh shit. What did I say? I wish I'd been recording that because I'll never remember that. You know? Oh, okay. And so that's yeah. my question too, because I know it's rehearsed. Like I have, I love, um, I love watching stand up, and then I've loved studying how people get to that stand up. I just think it's cool. But I've always wondered how how they do so well in 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 acting like it's the first time, knowing that they've rehearsed it, because it's like oh, yeah. and everything. And I'm like, how do you? Or even when they chuckle, sometimes I'm like, was that a part of it? Because it does help with the laugh sometimes. So I've always oh, wondered well, how that it works. Yeah, yeah, like comics, and that's the thing, like comics who laugh at their own shit, um, sometimes it's like, okay, yeah, I, I always laugh at this moment because that encourages the audience also to know that you can laugh at that. But also some of them, some of them are genuinely like, oh my God, I can't believe I just said that, that's funny. But it's more <laughs> often than not, I think it's, it's like, it's, it's written into the act because it's theater. That's yeah. what it is. It's performance. And, and that's what a lot of comics forget is that you're an entertainer. You're doing, you're doing in a good stand-up situation, especially if you're doing a theater, or a larger thing, it's a theatrical yeah. performance, which is why good stand-up comedy, a lot of times you see doing the act outs where, you know, they're using their hands and their whole body to convey the, the punchline or the joke. Uh, Joe Coy is great with that. Um, Mencia, people talk shit about Mencia all the time, but Mencia is one of those guys too, gets gets into it and he, you know, his facial expressions are really good. Yeah. Um, Ralphie May was good, good with that too. Um, uh, there's just, there's so many that, you know, you could, you know, Bill, Bill Hicks, Bill Hicks, you know, if you want to go back even further, Bill Hicks, who, if you don't know who he is, um, Bill Hicks, just go to Austin and you can see a bunch of people ripping off his act every every week. Really? There's a bunch of hacks. Uh, yeah, oh, they're terrible. The other one was yeah. um, he was I don't remember his name, uh, but he passed away like maybe five years ago. And he was one of Mitch his fam- one of his famous lines was like, What do I need the warranty for? I think that's Mitch Hedberg. He's he taught, hey man, why you gotta be there? like I, 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 uh, I got, oh, what was it? Yeah, uh, you'll play. Rice is a good meal if you want to eat like a thousand. Yeah, yeah, rice is a good meal if you want to eat a thousand of something. Yeah. Was it? He was losing, he was losing weight. Um, he was a, I can't remember his name. He was awesome. But yeah, he would, he would do that too. He uh, would do the so there was, expressions. But he died, you said. Yeah, he did. Um, he was buying a TV. He was buying a TV and the guy was like, uh, do you want warranty? And he was just like, why do I need it? If it's, is it going to break? And he's like, no. So he's like, so why do I need the warranty? What do I need an extended warranty for? He said, well, in case the TV breaks. The TV's going to break. I'm not buying it. His eyes went dead. <laughs> Nobody had ever said that to him before. And it's just like back and forth, but it was his face. It was, it was funny. I can't remember. He was well known. He was around for a while. Um, but Kathleen Madigan oh, was another one too. She like when she chuckles, it just helps with the, with the delivery. She's brilliant. She's so much fun to watch. Yeah. I feel like she's that person that she, sometimes I feel like it's a, like she wings it because it's, it's going off of current events and, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't see yeah, well, that's that's also a comic who writes a lot like um her, i think and like i think a lot of comic myself included you get lazy where you, you don't write a lot of new stuff when the act's working well uh but then then you go through periods where you write a bunch of new stuff and you're like oh this is great oh, I, I should write more but then there are the comics like kathleen maddie and people who write topical stuff the problem with topical humor is just such a short shelf life you know um which is why sometimes you see a comic and he's doing like a bill clinton bit you know and doing a bill clinton impression 
And you're like, how long ago did you write that fucking bit? And, but now like the fun thing is because all, all history is, you know, secular. It's, it's like, Oh, okay. Bill's back in the news. So you can kind of get away with yeah. doing a Bill Clinton bit because, you know, he's about to go to, you know, Jeffrey Epstein's Island. Yeah. So. Or the Spears guy who would do a Shaq impression impression. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Did you ever get to be Kathleen? I met her once. I, I don't really know her, okay. but I, I remember uh, friends of mine have done uh, shows with her. And so like, I've got to meet like over the years, Jesus, I've been doing it so long now. Um, I've got to meet so many of the, of, of the great, really great comics. I've got to work with them and Kathleen Madigan too. I would love to work with this. I love working with smart, funny women. And, um, I've got to work with so many really good ones and, and uh, there's, there's a weird thing. It's like shows when you can have a really great lineup in it, like Kathleen Madigan, if you were to just write her act out and read it, it would be funny. And you would probably not even know what gender the writer was. Mm, I see. Yeah, and I think that's that's something. Like, I mean, if you re- like, if you read the whole act, there would probably be a reference to something or other. But, but for the most part, it's just good comedy, you know. And that's what I think a lot of stand-ups forget because you you know they focus on, you know, who they are or what their physical attributes are or uh, who they uh, who they you know they uh, like Liza. What, what, like. Like Eliza, no. Eliza Schlesinger. Yeah, she kind of really goes towards like the women in their twenties or thirties. Yeah, right? yeah, and yeah, and she's funny. By the way, I, I've worked with her. She's yeah. super funny. Yeah. Yeah, super funny. Um, but she also, you know, she's also a, like a great roaster too, and she's like a, a good writer. And I think. But it's also, like I was saying, it's finding that core demographic that's going to support you well. So, like, if she goes to do a show somewhere, she can sell $50 tickets and, and you know, fill a thousand seat room yeah. and, and make, you know, some stupid money. But, uh, you know, it's, it's because she's also cultivated that act, which will bring those people in. Kind of like there is a, there is a, what the hell is her name? Um, she does she she actually does it. it's uh act for kids in gay men and she puts like um uh, lipstick on and said i'm so beautiful and, and it's like i worked security for her one time uh i'm trying to remember what her name is she's uh what the hell is her name uh she had a, in a netflix show too um but uh oh miranda sings Oh, Miranda yeah. sings, I think. My sister Miranda, right? My my sister loves her. The one, she would put like a large, yeah. like a big chunk of lipstick, right? Yes. Yeah, and then she's like just goofy and silly. But what she did was, and it's, the other thing is, she's yeah, 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 her. Yeah. Yeah. And she's she's wonderful to watch, by the way. Her audience absolutely loves her, and she sells out rooms, and it was crazy. And her sisters are opening act. Her sister's also a great singer. But Miranda sings. I've never seen she her. Goes I, up- my sister liked her, and I was like, when I first just saw a bit of it, I was like, what is she doing? But that's me knowing nothing about her. You know, I've never seen like yeah. a whole video or anything. Oh, dude, hey, check it out sometimes. It's actually it's 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 enjoyable, and it's I hate myself for admitting that, but it's <laughs> like it's good and you know yeah. it's fun. It's it's silly, but she her audience is you know tween girls and gay men. And the tween girls, of course, are a great audience because, you know, their parents are going to bring them there. They're not going to be disruptive. They're going to be enamored with it. And the gay men, you know, are usually, you know, they've got money and they they come up and get pictures and they buy all the merchandise. And it's just it was just such a fun and ridiculous show that I was like, oh my God. Cause I look at that end of it too a lot more now where like, uh, how can I get in the, to that type of market idea where you, you know, you're making, 
you know, the stupid money because I love yeah. doing stand up and I would do it for free, but I, it's, it's nice to make a good paycheck every now and then too. So. It's just hard. I think, cause I've, I think about that too, but it's like, it would be hard to, you would have to change who you are for the, for the act, which I think would be difficult after a while, you know, like for her, I think she, she's, I mean, she has a kid now and it's like, so are you going to just continue okay. it this way? I think it's her, unless I'm confusing her with somebody else. Shit, I don't know. But I don't know, like that would be hard for me to keep up as an act, you know, because that's not, I'm not used to that audience at all. I'm going to freeze here for a second. So I'm sorry, guys, but we actually had technical difficulties here um, because my Wi-Fi is shit. I have satellite internet, um, a.k.a. country living. Anyways, um, just FYI, we actually start diving into cancel culture. So, um, just think you can have some context. Um, yeah, sorry about that. We're winging it. <laughs> hey, no worries. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's weird. All the, all the people who, uh, in the last just year and a half have been, you know, they, they, they want to call them out and all that. Even Ellen DeGeneres, who, by the way, like Ellen, that's that's my new favorite one to watch because Ellen, who is beloved, beloved by people and was, you know, a gay icon and all this stuff. And now people are just tearing her apart, saying how she just a toxic culture that she had and how she was one of the worst people to work for. And 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 it, it's like, really? Because I don't know, like I used to watch her show and back in the day when she had a, a TV show with uh, Jeremy uh, Piven, you know, the, the oh, um, yeah. general show like back in the day and, and which was just a sweet show. She was the first, you know, you know, uh person on mainstream TV to really come out and be like, I'm gay. And then what she ends up doing is uh, she ends up now is like everyone's, everyone's shitting on her. And so I'm interested to see how this plays out because we just don't know anymore. It used to be there was, you know, uh, a a certain amount of uh, leeway people would be given, but no, there's none anymore. So uh, I, I don't think anybody is innocent. Like those twenty year olds that are for cancel culture, it's like you haven't even started doing stupid shit yet. Wait till you start doing real stupid shit. Yeah, and then you're gonna be like. Oh, I guess I'm gonna have to cancel myself. Like I just, you know, oh, yeah. they're attacking people who have lived their life already and have done stupid shit. Sure, some more, you know, worse than others that are oh, yeah. not the normal fun stuff, right? Like you're saying, it's weird shit. But yeah, yeah and Ellen, Ellen, you know, uh, but each week there's actually so I'll be doing. I'm starting a podcast, which is about cancel culture, and it's uh, it's just gonna be a weekly thing and talking about the. You know, and it'll have plenty of plenty of material for it because every week someone new is being targeted and attacked. And that's cool. Yeah, it, it, and uh, you know, it's 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 been going on for so long now. I, I but cancel culture isn't 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 new. I mean, as long as we've as long as there's been people, I'm sure they've tried to cancel people but now what they do is they go after your money and they go after your finances and they go after your business and and all that so but even back in like the american revolution times they would write you know these scathing political cartoons about you know george washington and you know other other yeah. people and, and it's just it's because people like to tear down whatever's above them and and it's you know it's good or good and bad i mean there, there should be you should always knock the piss out of people who are you know up on those pedestals but the other side is sometimes it's just not fair and it's not justified and and we're, we're seeing that more and more i think uh someone like louis louis ck louis ck um they're in a whole me too thing he came out and he was like you know i did these things and he was like trying to do a mea culpa where it's honestly you know what? I, I gotta be honest. Uh, I, I kind of was like, yeah, that wasn't really that big a deal. He told girls like, Hey, I'm going to jerk off in front of you. If you want to stay in the room and he never locked the door, forced him. And they were like, 
Well, I guess, but it was well known. That was like a thing he did because he was yeah in New York City. All the comics knew that was like if you were at a party, Louis was probably going to jerk off because he was a fucking yeah. weird guy. And so, uh, but then once people found out, ooh, I can monetize this, maybe have him settle out of court with me, ooh, you know, and that's just shitty, you know. And that was that was really sucky, man, because I really like Louis C.K. So that I, was like, it's so annoying when they well it just sucks that that was the label on him for everybody like sure internally you know that's your thing but to be known as that i mean yeah. and it's not gonna by the way the material. yeah he is he will come back to be probably the same comic that he was before with his highest stature um and maybe he learned a lesson from it maybe he didn't maybe he's still a freak uh, but he'll he'll end up. Uh, I think I think he's he's not. It's not like he's poor, he, you know. Uh, he was doing yeah. like four months after that. He was doing one nighters and just like not a not. He'd announce it the day of the show and sell out a you know a two hundred fifty three hundred seat room, and you know it, it kind of screwed up. He I guess he had a movie that was coming out and he had some other stuff, but he's. Yeah, he, he'll be fine. But he's also one of those guys that's written kind of like uh, kind of like Chappelle. I put him with Chappelle as far as like just the amount of stuff that they have written and the amount of material that they have and the stuff that they can talk about effortlessly that uh, makes yeah. other comics angry. Going, oh man, how good! Uh, why you just talked about you know ramen noodles and made it great and and oh I hate you for that. You know, so uh, I think, but I also think, you know, that, that creepy stuff, I have a weird, I have a weird moral compass as like, like, I, I don't really care what anyone, if you don't fuck kids and you don't, you know, steal from people, I'm, we're usually fine. But, uh, you know, but also if you like, if you're like a predatory guy, if like a, re, like a, re, a rapey kind of guy, like, I just think that, you know, you need to be beaten and 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 i think that you know there's there's those guys out there and and i i just and there's a few in the san antonio comedy scene uh over the years and you know people knew who they're but they don't care they you know and and because it's not that big a deal because they have no money so they just kind of brush it under the mm -hmm. thing you know and but that's every comedy scene in every county, but they also, you know, it's it depends. If you can do something for people, then they usually forget any of your terrible stuff that you do, and uh, and that's happened quite a bit in in local comedy scenes across the country. You know, in San Antonio included, Austin, Houston, Dallas, everywhere in Texas, because I, I I know all, a lot of people there, but uh, but I'm sure in every city, every city has shit like that. So. And, and I just, I would prefer those guys to just disappear because, you know, young, young people, anyways, when you're 18, 19, you're just dumb and you don't know any better. And so you think, oh, this person showed an interest in me. So yeah. And then you, all of a sudden you find yourself, well, maybe because they like me, huh? if I do this for them, then they're going to do something for yeah. them. And the, but it's like they don't and they can't help you because usually those people are in no position to help you in any way whatsoever. So you end up, you know, getting the short end of the stick. So I don't know. on your podcast, are you going to talk about like, cause you kind of mentioned the history of cancel culture, like always being around. So do you plan to dive into like what that is and then how it applies now and yes. just breaking it down? I would have okay. wanted to like, the the first the first episode is pretty much going to be just talking about the uh, history of it, and then it's going to talk about you know some of the individual things. But each week will be basically I want to talk about some cancel culture, uh, some of the victims of. It. And also, here's the thing: sometimes people should be canceled because they're terrible. Um, I get that. There are people out like Hitler should have been canceled. You know, like if we had social media. You know, there would have been a bunch of Jews going, eh, this hella guy is not such a good fella, you know. Uh, but Wake up, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and certain things like that. But then sometimes it's just like, 
you know, Goya beans, you know, uh, because they're the, the owner of Goya beans supported Donald Trump. And so people are like, don't buy Goya. Yeah. You know, politically, I lean to the right on a lot of things, but I also, I lean to the middle and the left on other things. And, but I also can't have reasonable conversations with people because it used to be you could, but now people, if you have any differing opinion, then, you know, it becomes just your murmur. And it's like, right. really, you know, but, you know, we could have had a nice conversation and figured out where we have a, a mutual uh, agreements upon, but that doesn't happen anymore because people, they just want to point fingers and yell. And I, that happens from the left and the right, more from the left, I think, but the right does it too. And it's, it's just sickening. It's stupid. I hate all that shit. I'd rather, um, most of my friends, most of my like good long time friends are, uh, they wouldn't be conservatives or Republicans. Even my, one of my friends, John Moss is one of the worst, he is one of the worst liberal types of people because he's a genuinely good human being who's also like a super left leaning liberal and he was in the peace corps and you know he writes sci-fi and fantasy now he's a really great author by the way if you ever get a chance to read jonathan moss he writes really good books i also i uh, wrote a couple of scripts for films and he's just he's a brilliant guy he went to stanford and, uh, yeah. and he, uh, he was an open mic comic in San Antonio for a while and then stopped doing comedy. And he found a nice Jewish girl and moved out to California and he okay. married her. And then he worked for like, uh, he worked for the animal planet. And I, I want to like a couple other things, but he, but he's yeah. like one of those liberals that's like, uh, like the real deal because his his basis for his liberalism is based on a vast amount of reading and and eyewitnessing things and he's a rich kid too he came from money so liberalism yeah. generally is, is something that rich kids can do because they have that that luxury it's hard to be super liberal when you're poor because you're just like, oh, I got to get a job. And, you know, and then, and then you're angry at people who do better than you. And then, nah, you know, but. Which is comes, why they're for like the higher pay and all that stuff. Too. Yeah. 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 But he's like the real deal. And he's just such a good person. And whenever we talk, he's so positive and like, and, and it annoys me because I don't need that positivity in my life. It brings. Me <laughs> <laughs> Could it be like a traditional, is like a traditional liberal kind a classic of thing? American liberal, classic. Yeah, like in, yeah. in, in, in this, in the style that, you know, he is open to, cause he'll read, we were doing a thing for a while where we we're trying to, we'd pick out a book that the other one should read that would not normally be yeah. something you would read. And so, you know, uh, I, I got him a Ben Shapiro one, I think. And, and he gave me some, uh, uh, Sundar Gupti or some some Indian guy, you know, about all you know, peace and love and harmony, all that bullshit, which which is actually it's good. It was, and I, I'm gonna have to look for the book sure. now because it was like a year ago we did that, and then um, he he's just he's just a really like a good guy. But that's the way most of my friends are. Like most of my friends from New York are, you know, dying the wool, you know liberal democrats but it used to be democrats and liberals they were just people who supported unions but they still waved a flag sure. and they loved america and all that but now sure. they've been to where they're you know communists it's, uh, it's, it's gone a little extreme yeah, yeah. Little, and even even the democrats most of them that i know they're like yeah it's but they don't want to say anything because then they get you know they get attacked by all the people in their own party so it's just not worth saying anything and I should probably not yeah. speak out on stuff because I get attacked all the time. But I also don't care because they can't really do anything to me. They can't fuck my life up any more than it is. See, that's my thing. Like, I, I also can have a bunch of unpopular opinions. And I always say, like, nobody attacks me. And B is right away saying, like, well, for one, you're brown. For one, you're half. And then for second, you're half gay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I was like, okay, I have all the passes in the world to talk about whatever, but I'm like, that's kind of stupid still, you know, because 
people that are white get attacked all the time. Even B, my wife, she's not, if you remember her, she's not, she's Hispanic, but she's white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they've told her, like, you're, uh, they've called her all kinds of names, and it's like, she's Hispanic, you fucking idiot. Like, you're the racist, assuming she's white. You yeah. Know? People love to label. They love to throw the labels on people. And, and because then if you can, you can separate them from the herd and then it's easier to attack them. It's easier to attack people once you've labeled them. And I think once if you're, and it's easy to label people once they don't go along with all of your, your narrative that you're posting out there. And, you know, and I think, and by the way, I have a ton of friends, you know, it's, 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 there's a, a, a couple of uh, couples of, of ladies that I know and they're kind of conservative, you know, like I, I have a, I have a tranny friend and I know that's not the proper term. We'll let's call her a chick with a dick. And, uh, she, she better. yeah, she's, she's conservative. She's like a gun owner in, a, in the NRA and, you know, that's badass. Yeah. And she, you know, you ask her to do my podcast. That's fucking yeah, cool. She, I, I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk. I like about finding that. those unicorns. I really do. That's why I, I also wanted to bring you on because I like that you still have that style of comedy. And I know it was only one conversation we had, and I was also drinking at the time. But <laughs> nonetheless, I was just like, okay, like I want to see more of your shows. So yeah, and it's been sure. hard lately. So I was like, let me reach out. Huh? Once once stuff starts up again, I'll I'll get you and your gal uh, uh, some tickets. And, you know, I'd love to go to New York. Like, honestly, I would make the. I've been wanting to go. Um, but I mean, if you go up there, that'd be cool. I'd be like, let's let's do a, a trip over there. And then we, I don't know. Maybe I'm just planning. Too far ahead, but, <laughs> it's but, always yeah. plain. No, I, yeah. I miss the comedy place. I really do. Huh? Yes, yeah, it's, it's good. To, it's, it's actually good to plan road trips. And you should never stop doing that. Because I think, you know, travel. Tra- Travel for me, like I, I actually hate travel. The I hate the airport. I hate do that's very stressful for me to do that. But I love going places, and I love I love finding little places when I go. Like like you know when you go to New Orleans or Memphis or like I've done I've I've been to almost every state in the country to do stand up. Really? And, yeah, and yeah. and when you do like you find you find that there is there's some comics who actually mark it down they they're like i've done all 50 states well there's certain states i haven't done washington and oregon i haven't done uh i haven't done uh, south carolina i did alaska i haven't done hawaii um i'd like to do hawaii though i missed out on an opportunity because uh the uh owner of the comedy club in saratoga springs uh, who's also Nick DiPaolo's manager, he um, had a little spot out in Hawaii, which I was hoping to get out to go out, but it stopped because they had that, that uh, her, her, what's it called, volcano thing that happened there, and they ended up shutting oh. thing down. So, yeah, it was weird. But I'm, uh, yeah, I think this upcoming year, though, like after all the weirdness is over, I can get back to doing what I want to do. It'll life will be just much better. And it's going to have a different, it's the same act, but a different focus, I think. And it's going to be, yeah. Cool. I'm excited for your podcast though. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send you, I'll send you the link when, once it's up, I'm going to try to, it's going to be on all this stuff. I'm, there's a guy who, uh, knows how to get it on all of the platforms and he's going to do that for me. Yeah. Also send me a link when this is all done and I'll share it. Once I'm off my, once I'm off off of my uh, banning on Facebook. So, but I can share it on Instagram or, and, uh, and uh, what what else am I on right now? I don't know. Oh, TikTok. I think I have a TikTok account. You have a TikTok, Jay. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, apparently that's a thing now. I know. I have one too, and I'm not proud of it. No, no one is. Not one person I've met is proud of their TikTok. 
They're all like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not 15. But they're like using it. They're like, yeah, I have a TikTok. <laughs> it's a tense. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we'll see, right? I don't know for how much longer. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Donald Trump says he's going to try to get it. Although it's supposed to be like uh, it got bought by Google or something. Oh. So it might not be a Chinese company anymore that owns it. Smart. Yeah. Shush. Yeah. Oh, this dog's an asshole. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. So you're voting for Donald Trump in 2020? Yeah. Yeah, because there's no, there's no other alternative. Like, uh, yeah, there's, you know, it's Trump and, and I, I don't even like Trump. Like I wish, here's the thing. I like all the stuff he does. I pretty much agree with. And like his actual, like executive orders and things like, I just don't want him to talk publicly. I don't want him to tweet no. and I don't want him to like do interviews and stuff. He's, um, he's too petty and petulant. And but but what he does is like solid. Like he he's done a lot of good things for the country. Like if you looked at, on paper to saw what he did, you'd be like, wow, that's some great. Like lowering the price of you know diabetes uh, medication, you know, uh, insulin, yeah, you know, doing a ton of stuff that you know should have been done years ago. And but he's just such a douchebag when he talks, and it just fucking. And it's hard for me because I'm like, all right, he's doing a great job. And then I'm like, oh, why'd you talk? You shouldn't have done that. Now you're fighting. They need to write his speeches for him and just have him read it. Right? Yeah. When he speaks off a teleprompter, yeah. he does. He sounds presidential and great. But then what he does is he, uh, I'll see him reading like his speech. But then he gets that look in his eye like, all right, well, here's something. Yeah. You know what? And you right over there, you got a big head. And you're like, oh, Jesus, just shut the fuck up. You're fucking he killing. remembers the Washington Post and what they did to him back in 2016 and he gets like PTSD and is like, I fucking <laughs> remember you guys ragging on me. <laughs> uh, oh, he kills me. Yeah. He's just great. Yeah. But that's what, that's what, Americans love that shit. And by the way, a ton of people, I'm seeing this so much now. People who would have never voted for Trump are going to vote for him because things are just too fucking crazy right now. And what they usually like is it's better the devil you know. And they're afraid, oh, okay, well, if we vote for Biden, then things are going to get really, really bad instead of just bad the way they are right now. But here's the other thing. Um, I think in the next month and a half, things are going to pop off where either they come out with a vaccine for the COVID or that there's something that there's going to be like a big thing that happens that's going to sway this election. Or... Trump legalizes marijuana, which uh, if he does that, then he wins the election. In that would be crazy. I don't see him doing that because of his brother. He's not against he's totally it. not. He's not against well, legal. Uh, uh, make, uh, he's actually spoken about that, and he says, "Well, you know, what? yeah, yeah." Like he's he's not he's not against legal marijuana. Um, he's against big pharmaceutical companies making huge profits. So like in the, the liberals that, would like that though. And the the problem is he that could mess him up in Texas a little bit because Texas is still one of those states that's like, we don't want legal marijuana, but uh, ninety percent of the people do. You know, it's but you have to pretend they that they don't. So it's just I don't know. It's well I mean I think it would still be up to the state. Is it federally legal? It's just not federally. Illegal. It's illegal. It's up to the states right now to uh, de. Oh, okay. They can and but it's still a little like so. It's a weird thing. Like you're not allowed yeah. to put money in a federally insured bank that you make from marijuana. So that's why, like in Colorado and these other states, they have these like you know basically uh, vaults that they store their money in. And I'm, I'm not sure exactly what you would call it, but they're, they're, they just can't be federally insured. And so they can't put deposit their money into banks because it's drug money, it's technically, but it's really not. And yeah. I think they need to change that. But if they change that, then it's going to be a big, a big win. That'd be crazy if you did that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, it's a, it's a Trump card, literally. 
Um, so we'll, uh, we'll you know, see. No, yeah, I I appreciate you for being on, and I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, no, but... this was hey, you did great, and you, you were you're like a you performed like a trooper. Uh, you know what? A lot of people it would have made them too flummoxed to continue, but you, you put your game face on, and you got things back and running. And uh, nice fucking job. Fucking winged it. Yeah, you winged it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> sure did the whole fucking time so where can people find i think you said it already but you're on facebook what are, i know you're banned in a few places but you got facebook instagram I'm on facebook instagram tiktok uh twitter i oh actually i don't know if i'm still on twitter because i got kicked off twitter a couple times um i have one for my cat that uh is on twitter um <laughs> what's that one called yeah it's a uh, louis c cat <laughs> yeah it's amazing sorry yeah it's puns sorry yeah. <laughs> just yeah puns get me okay yeah. that's awesome yeah. i'll include them in my description <laughs> 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 but uh yeah thanks for being on appreciate it appreciate thanks your time all right peace